Hello students, uh, today we shall continue with the same unit, infection control and in that the topic that we are going to be discussing today is immunity. Now I hope you have heard about this term immunity and in the current scenario the word is very very familiar. It means uh, with the present COVID scenario you have heard about uh, how immunity is important. So you would have heard a lot about the word immunity. Now let us see what is the definition of immunity or what does it mean by saying uh, immunity. Now immunity is defined as the ability of a person in order to defend himself from any type of infection. So that means what immunity is the ability of your body to defend against any kind of organism that is attacking it or trying to cause an infection among within your body. So basically it is like the defense mechanism. So again it is uh, a repetition about what we have learned in the previous uh, few slides in the same chapter. If you remember we have discussed about the, le uh, the three levels of defense. So again it is how your body is trying to get rid of the organism. So the main idea is when an in um, organism enters into your body, the body itself is trying to do its job. It's trying to kill itself, it's trying to contain itself or it's trying to destroy itself completely and for that many um, many many aspects come into play. So basically first it, it begins off with your uh, physical barriers like as I mentioned the skin, uh, the mucous uh, membrane because all, all this is for a reason that our body is functioning in this particular way. Also once it is within the body, the organism, again certain chemicals are also being released. So that means what the body is well and, uh, well and truly aware that there is an invasion by this foreign organism or, a for, uh, or uh, an outsider. So what happens once it, it notices that it's trying to uh, produce or it's trying to um, produce all different uh, uh, things or it's like it's kind of defending the body. It's trying to protecting our body by releasing all these chemicals as well. And along with it, the main important thing is the cells, the main lymphocytes or the T cells uh, come into play because the, those are those they have also the phagocytic activity or action where they are like ingesting or like destroying the organism completely. Also there are other ways sometimes you know uh, every person may not be born with this ability of having a good immune uh, system or good immune levels. So when um, you know for this what happens is once we do not have it it does not mean that you are not going to you are going to be living like that no. For that we are going to be ha helping you uh, helping your body adapt to this particular condition means trying to help your body uh, perform the defense mechanism. So then what happens the vaccines and uh, the artificial methods of, um, of uh, helping a person become immune comes into play. So that means we are helping the body get rid of the organism and this is done through vaccination. So, um, so I hope the definition of immunity is clear. I will just repeat it one more time. So it is defined as the ability of an organism to resist a particular infection or toxin by the action of specific antibodies or sensitized white blood cells. So as you know the white blood cells are the main defense mechanism of our uh, body. And when these white blood cells um, are um, normal, are at normal levels and are, it, is effect, it is active, then they are doing their um, job so, um, or they are performing their functions effectively. So the whole uh, idea or the main uh, action is to defend the body against any type of infection. Now infection um, or immunity is of two types. So it is classified as innate immunity and adaptive immu immunity. So innate means what inborn means you are born with it. So nobody changes it. If you do not have it, then there are ways of acquiring it. But if you have good levels of it, yes, then it's good for you. So immune levels or innate immunity means what? It's the physical barriers, the chemical barriers and the cell defenses means all these are performing their functions actively and you have a healthy system. So that is the meaning of innate immunity means a person born with this means it, the body is able to defend itself naturally. So there is no need of any kind of artificial ingestion um, or injection into the system so that your body is not able to perform its, um, its actions. Then that is when we try to adapt all these artificial methods and that means you, uh, we kind of give it through the vaccinations and artificial methods and this is nothing but classified as adaptive immunity. So innate means inborn means a person is born with these levels. So the person's body is able to take care of it but whereas when we do not have it then the classification uh, becomes adaptive immunity and again in that we have two types active immunity and passive immunity. So active immunity is by the vaccination 
um, and the natural methods like when especially when or a cough again what happens your body is perform then what is humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity now humoral immunity is again uh, it is based on the serum antibody so basically what happens um, all this uh, the plasma cells basically they produce the uh, the antibodies so what happens those are called as humoral immunity the the antibodies that are produced by the plasma cells and that how it helps in getting rid of this um, uh, infection that is classified as humoral immunity and when we call the cell mediated immunity the main uh, functions are being carried out by the t cells or the lympho lymphocytes so again those cells will help in uh, in uh, protecting our body against the foreign bodies that attack us so I hope that uh, it is clear. So again, we have, uh, very well classified here. Again, when you say the lymphocytes, there are two types. If you um, if you have noticed that, so you have T cells and the B cells. So the human immunity is taken care of by the plasma cells, and that is mainly dealt by the B cell, and that is a plasma cell, and that produces the required antibodies, and then that protects the body against infection. Whereas the T cell or the cellular response is main um, the main component over there, or which comes into play is the T cell, and that helps in activating the immune cells, and then uh, ingest, uh, ingesting or the uh, foreign bodies, and then protecting the body against the. So this is the meaning of human immune. Uh, just walk in any random time. So that is why we restrict the per, uh, entry of the person into the hospital, and especially in ICU setups, it is very very crucial that we maintain that and it's very important also to ensure <coughs> that the ICUs are uh, cleansed and disinfected properly and because we do not know how many uh, different types of patients come in there and there are ways and there are chances of all this um, the, uh, the infection aspect to increase as well if the uh, infection control protocol or measures are not being carried out properly. So, um, nosocomial infection or hospital acquired infection again is nothing but the infections that are um, that the patient gets in the hospital or while during the hospital stay. Now the, it is not it, it can be uh, critical or it can be serious but again when the hospital follows its particular protocols and standards effectively then such uh, infections can be minimized and again that is a reason why we say even with the healthcare members or the healthcare team it is very important that they practice good aseptic techniques um, uh, while in hospital and especially because if we as nurses are going to be taking care of more than one or two or three or ten patients. So we do not want the infection to be spread from one person or one patient to the other. So it is very important as nurses you follow the protocols and you also manage the stimuli. Now what are the risk factors for this nosocomial infection? So the risk factors or the chances of the risk of the of this nosocomial infection to spread um, easily includes the duration of the hospital stay so then as uh, how lengthy or the length of the hospital stay and also it, it um it also depends as i mentioned about how the um, the, the patient is being looked after the the sanitization measures that is practiced the cleansing measures that is practiced the disinfection measures that are practiced and also a uh, patient may also be having uh, some catheters, indwelling catheters are nothing but the catheters that is inserted into the patient's body. It can be the Foley's catheter. It can also be the simple IV cannula. So that is why some of the hospital has protocols saying that once an IV cannula, or that is nothing but where you give your IV infusions, the cannula it is inserted, you maintain it only for uh, less than 72 hours. And again, this is not a universal protocol. It differs from hospitals to hospital. But normally what happens, they say that at least a cannula can be maintained between anywhere between 48 to 72 hours. But again, um, again, I mentioned it is not a universal formula, but it is based on the hospital protocol. It needs to be changed because we do not want any sort of infection that is going into the patient. So it can be due to the catheters as well. It can also be because of the mechanical ventilation. means what sometimes a patient is on ventilators, especially when they're having when they will come into the hospital in very critical scenarios or emergency conditions where they cannot breathe, they are dropping the saturation, then what happens is we are going to be putting the endotracheal tube into the patient's mouth to help the patient breathe better. He will then be connected to the mechanical ventilator which is helping him to breathe. Now, if the patient is on that for more than like 15 days, there are chances of again hospital acquired pneumonia means what is it? That is again an infection. So that is again going to be causing an infection in the lungs because again this is uh, related to the breathing aspect. So these are the ways 
So, and uh, the nurse looking after or the healthcare team um, looking after this patient has to be very uh, vigilant about how to handle the patients in such scenario. So, maintain all the aseptic protocols, wash hands, use of PPEs, wearing the, uh, the complete set. There is no shortcuts there where you do not wear a mask, you do not wear a gown and washing your hands thoroughly between patient handling. It's very, very important. Providing adequate space among the cubicles, making sure the patient is also being well looked after, being cleaned daily, the, uh, the sheets are changed daily, uh, checking for them the, the saline or the distilled water that is being used or the saline that is being used even in the uh, the humidifiers, it's very, very crucial because all those are the, uh, in the simple, when you're administering oxygen, you've seen the, you have seen the humidifier, okay? So when we fill in with, um, uh, the, when we fill in with that, with the saline, and it's very, very important that even that has to be looked after and uh, we, we make sure that, uh, you know, uh, it has to be changed regularly so that there is no chances of infection occurring. <coughs> Again, uh, it is also because of um, the antibiotic usage, so long-term antibiotics, again, what happens in the, in the organisms can turn out to be resistant, okay, to that. Again, age is one of the factors because, again, um, we see it most commonly among the uh, young children, the neonates. Again, what happens is since they are young, again, they, they are just developing and they are just growing, the body may not be having enough um, enough ways of uh, defending itself. So, th those are also the chances when, when the child is in hospital the chances of infection are going to be more likely. And again, in cases where there is immune deficiency. So again, that depends upon the patient's uh, health or the patient's body and how strong he is and both <coughs> internally. So that is nothing but related to your immune system. So these are all the risk factors and the ways of contracting this hospital uh, acquired infection or all communal infection. So the practical methods of preventing the nosocomial infection includes hand washing, as often as possible, use of hand spray or hand rub, okay? And nurses have to be very vigilant. They do not want to carry any infection from the hospital back to their home or bring in any infection from their home into the hospital. So that is the reason why we say about not to use jewelry, okay? Especially the, uh, when the nurse is going to be performing any procedures, it's very important she removes the jewelry like finger rings. And that is the reason why we say keep your nails cut short. We do not want any kind of... Um, um, dirt or filth that is going to be settling down underneath your uh, your nails and that is again going to be proving as a chance for um, transmitting any kind of infection again you uh, cleansing that is what i meant by saying in the beginning cleansing and disinfecting the hospital equipment so from the simple bp apparatus the monitors that is being used for the patient the ecg leads that are being used for the patient the saturation probe or the pulse oximeter that is being used for the patient the stethoscope that is being used for the patient so all this at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day you begin it by disinfecting and then only start your day and start using it on patients also wearing your ppes then intravenous catheter that is what i mentioned to you again very very important once you have inserted the in iv cannula you mark it you date it you mark it and you also enter it in your patient's folder you record it and by saying that when it was inserted the date and the time so that you keep a track of it and you make sure that it comes off between 48 to hours so wearing the mask gowns um, and making sure that you follow the proper protocol, the catheters when it is inserted into the patient. Now, the concept of asepsis. Now, the term asepsis itself means sterile. So, the whole idea of the concept of asepsis means you are maintaining the sterility in the hospital and while handling the patient. So, it is very, very important and the main goal of asepsis is to eliminate infection and to achieve and not to, to eliminate infection, it's not just basically to achieve the sterility, but the whole idea for doing this itself is to stop or to, pull or to bring the levels of infection to zero, okay, not even minimum. We pulled it as we, we want to bring the infection levels to zero, means there is absolutely no microorganism. And especially in the sterile uh, fields like um, the operating theaters, the surgical ICUs, and uh, the cath labs, they are all the sterile areas. So it is very, very important about how the department also maintains its protocol by keeping them sterile, um, keeping in mind that the patients are coming in and uh, not everybody is actually uh, allowed to walk in through that. So again, the staff there is going to be very, very vigilant about following the protocols like wearing your uh, scrubs, wearing the cap, wearing the mask, wearing the goggles, uh, shoe covers, and not to be wearing this and walking all around the hospital. So basically, asepsis is a state of being free 
from microorganisms and this again when I say microorganisms it includes everything such as bacteria, viruses, uh, fungi, uh, parasites, protozoans, etc. And um, <laughs> there are two categories of asepsis. So basically this medical asepsis. So medical asepsis also referred to as a clean technique. Again, basically the practices are to reduce the number of growth okay, of microorganisms. And again, this can also be, uh, this can also be achieved by following the proper uh, methods or techniques like hand washing, uh, cleansing, uh, sanitization, uh, proper use of uh, personal protective equipment like gowning, gloving, wearing mask, um, uh, the, the cap, the shoe covers. Also, uh, following pr standard protocols for disinfecting the articles that is being used by the patient <coughs> at the end at the in the hospital during his stay. So that is the meaning of saying that. And so medical asepsis is nothing but a clean technique. And um, you have also learned about the medical hand washing. That is another. That's also there are classifications that which you'll be learning further. So that again means it is a clean technique of hand washing. And again, that is when you are uh, kind of you're doing a like a wound dressing or a cleansing of the wound changing just the dressings so all this is you do do the medical hand washing or you're just going to perform a small procedure on a patient when you do that when you know that is that is something related to a procedure on a patient then it is better you do the uh, the surgical asepsis a technique or the sterile technique where you're going to be washing your hands thoroughly from the tip of the fingers till your elbow and making sure how you um, also wear the gloves and uh, put on your gown so all those are the sterile technique. So that is the meaning of surgical asepsis means it's a sterile technique and those are practices that keeps an area or object completely free of uh, microorganisms and that is including the spores. Again there are various methods of achieving the surgical asepsis. So first of all uh, this is what I said meant by saying medical asepsis again all practicals which are all uh, procedures or practices which are intended to confine means to just to contain the microorganisms in that specific area. So we are trying to uh, best to make sure whatever area that we are going to use or whatever care that we will be providing to the patient is definitely going to be a clean procedure. It is not going to be dirty and it is not going to be contaminated at all. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to prevent the number of microorganisms, the growth of microorganisms and especially the transmission or the cross infection in the um, patient. So that is what happens in the medical asepsis. Now the aseptic technique and this is again a repetition so you can just follow, uh, read this and uh, follow through with your notes as well. So basically the means practices or pr uh, procedures to prevent the contamination from uh, pathogens or microorganisms and it involves basically the standard rules to minimize the risk of infection among the healthcare workers and all these are the strict um, uh, techniques that is being practiced in the as I mentioned in the surgical rooms, in the surgical ICUs, in the operating theatres and, and also it is better to, um, to follow these kind of practices in the entire healthcare setting. So we know that yes, the infection um, rates are definitely okay. Now there are three levels of asepsis which are nothing but um, antisepsis which is nothing but which prevents the uh, or which, yeah, which stops the growth of bacteria and then again uh, nothing but as you use your um, the, the you know like the skin preps, the betadine and uh, the chlorhexidine like the skin prep on the patient, you are washing hands with that particular uh, lotion or the solution. So these are ways of preventing the, uh, the growth of microorganisms and that is also the reason when you are doing your hand wash, you also use the nail brush. Okay, so you are trying to remove every bit of uh, dirt and um, um, the soil per particles or the, or the you are uh, trying to ensure that your hands are thoroughly clean and uh, that is what is meant by saying the antisepsis and that is what we are using when, especially when you are doing your uh, medical hand washing or the surgical hand washing with your um, uh, ethyl alcohol content as well as the, the betadine or the chlorhexidine as well. Now, the next level will be including disinfection. So basically, antisepsis is related to the cleansing aspect. So basically, you're trying to keep it clean and prevent all the growth of microorganisms. Now, disinfection again means like it can be using the chemicals, like how you disinfect the article, like cleaning oil, especially with the bleach, making sure that it has got the certain uh, percentage of uh, the bleach, um, uh, the uh, solution in it in order to ensure that yes, the microorganisms are definitely going to be killed with this using this particular disinfectant. So that is another way of ensuring that yes, the, the microorganisms are being taken care of. 
sterilization is the best method and that relates to the aseptic method so again there is zero microorganisms that means it is complete destruction right from the beginning stages or right from the spore stage right from where it is beginning to grow okay so those are all the ways and usually we have different methods of sterilization again which you have learned um, you know we have the, the the hot methods like the steam under pressure the gas the radiation the use of chemicals and all those is happening at very very high temperatures in a very specific location or area and again the area again or the department has to be thoroughly clean and again then um, very important for the personnel working there to follow strict aseptic techniques while they are handling the instruments or equipment. So these are all the different levels of which the uh, asepsis or the, uh, the sterile methods can be achieved. So basically by cleansing, disinfectionization. So this is again a repetition about um, the principles of medical hand washing. Basically, uh, what you have to do is perform hand hygiene, put on your gloves, and um, when invading sterile areas of the body, maintain the sterility of the body system. When placing an item into a, in a sterile area of the body, make sure the item is sterile. So this is basically, you are trying to ensure that once when we say medical asepsis means again it is something but a clean technique but again it begins off with thorough hand washing. Okay? And once you have done that, make sure you use the PPEs and make sure even before you start off, you cleanse the patient's body to begin with, you drape the patient properly. This all has been explained to you previously and also whatever you are using on the patient it has to be sterile there is no short ways of just rinsing it or just cleansing it and using it on the patient you make sure any instrument you open the package is going to be a sterile okay so medical aseptic methods it can be by isolation precautions which is as i um, mentioned previously as well isolation is basically treating the patient individually so when you know a patient has got a contagious disease it means something which is uh, which is going to be spreading okay so what happens there, you're going to be treating that patient individually in a separate room and he's going to have all his equipments dedicated for his room only. You will not be using it between the patients, okay? So very, very important to do that. So use of uh, thorough hand washing or rather following thorough hand washing methods, use of gown mask, pe um, gloves, PPEs and um, using disposables. Okay, making sure you disinfect every equipment once you use and making sure you do not carry the infection from one place to the other. So basically thorough hand washing, then leave the patient, then again when you are going to the next patient, you wash hands and only then start again. So all this again has to be uh, conveyed to the team effectively. So definitely teaching and um, health education is very, very important among the nursing personnel or rather among the staffs itself, very, very important um, education. So infection control department also will have to do their bit about doing their proper audits and also making sure they um, convey this information to the staff nurses by, th by uh, performing or conducting effective education sessions. Okay. And also, uh, the um, importance of uh, preventive vaccination and inoculation and medication. So this is what by we, we learn by saying the, uh, the passive methods of acquiring the immunity. So all this has also to be, should also be taught or conveyed or counseled um, uh, the, to the patient and the family regarding how to improve his immune system and strong. Now, what are the elements of surgical asepsis? Again, main by saying the sterile technique of the complete destruction of microorganism, basically the levels to zero, means it includes thorough hand washing, that is thorough surgical hand washing, and everything what you use here is going to be sterile, okay? And the way you open the packaging, again, has to be, is a way of opening it. You do not touch the <coughs> inner portion of it. Again, you're going to be thoroughly, um, you have, you need to have your proper attire, means the thorough use of PPE is very, very important and also ensuring that the nurse knows the importance of using or utilizing the sterile packaging rather than just picking up an instrument randomly. Okay, you do not use that. If you have doubts whether it is sterilized or not, then you do not use it. You ensure that it is being kept there and you open a package where you have the sterile equipment. There is no doubt there, especially when a patient is in a surgical uh, OT uh, or a surgical area. There is no doubts if you know that uh, the instrument is not, um, uh, it is not a sterile, you, any doubts in mind, it's rather better not to use it, okay. So these are all the better because unnecessarily we do not want infections to be transferred to the patient. So these are all the um, methods of achieving the surgical. 
Now again, the, the main principles of surgical asepsis again use uh, means use only sterile items within the sterile field. So that is what I meant by saying in the, when in doubt, do not use it. You ensure that you open another packaging. It doesn't matter. And whatever is or previously opened has to be sent back to the CSSD and the personnel there will take care of it. Okay, they will again rinse it, they will repackage it and they will send it back to you. Again, very important that how the sterile drapes are being stored and stocked, the numbers to be right and before you open a tray, um, you need to know what kind of a tray you're opening because unnecessarily you don't want, do not want to waste because once you open the tray, it is, it's over. The sterile aspect is over, then it is considered to be unsterile. So whenever a surgery is happening, you ensure or the nurse rather ensures that the correct surgical tray or the equipment tray is being opened. Once you do that, ensure that you have the correct number of instruments, count them, make sure that they are right and if you, in case you do not have any instrument there, then you start using the single packaging. So when I say single packaging again, you have to make sure that whatever single uh, packaging instruments are being opened, they need to be sterile as well. Okay, and very important of all this, the nurse handling this equipment also should know why she's handling it and what is the use of it and whether it is going to be sterile. It has to be checked before it is opened and given to the surgical nurse. Very important, the nurse also have to follow the correct discarding met methods of the, the used articles or the used items such as her own PPEs has to be discarded effectively. Also, the instruments or the equipment used also has to be thoroughly discarded and sent back to the this is the method of hand washing technique again uh, basically everywhere you have been seeing this the main um, ways of the main uh, or the uh, what I would say is the, cr the initial step of preventing any infection even to a child we say this now wash hands okay so before you touch anything yes wash hands in doubt also wash hands and begin so this is a hand washing technique which you have also the procedure has also be you have studied previously about you follow the different steps about how you do the palm rub then at the back of the hands then you interlace your fingers and then you do the rub then you interlock your fingers then you rub the thumb and then you do the rubbing of the fingertips and finally up till the wrist so basically this uh, this method is the medical hand washing like a clean technique from your fingertips to the wrist okay and it, it should take a good 15 to 20 seconds of hand washing this is one of the methods and one of the most crucial methods of preventing any sort of infection to um, now surgical method of hand washing or the sterile technique again it, it's the same um, it, uh, it's the similar way but what you're going to be using here is um, the antiseptic lotion either betadine or chlorhexidine and you wash your hands thoroughly but before that you ensure that you have your uh, cap on your mask on your goggles on you roll up your sleeves and then you begin your hand wash so you take your betadine scrub you start using it and then you start scrubbing from the tip of the fingers until your elbow okay and you scrub and different as a, there's again uh, these has been all, always uh, this also has been taught to you it can be done by the stroke method like how you use your brush for stroking mm, there's nothing but to scrub or you can also use the time method which is nothing but you're, you're uh, scrubbing for a good um, uh, two to three minutes and the complete hand washing method takes anywhere between three to five minutes so you scrub thoroughly and it's until your elbow and you r r you run it under the tap you make sure uh, you, uh, it's thoroughly clean once you have clean you do not drop your hands below your hip level you hold it upright and then you dab using your sterile towel and then the towel is also being discarded effectively and then you put on your gloves so this is the surgical hand washing now what are the five moments of hand washing means what are the when is the it is important to perform hand washing so basically it is important to perform hand washing before touching a patient before a clean or aseptic procedure after touching a patient after touching patients surroundings means especially when you go near a patient and when you you have to uh, you may, maybe you handled the patient's bed or the, you just positioned the patient, you rotated the patient, you rolled the patient for some kind of position change or rather you touch the patient's um, uh, table, you are offering him food or something, you, you just uh, touch the patient's table. So anything for this, it doesn't matter you touch but again if you have done it, it's better you wash your hands. Once you have immediately done it, go in straight away, wash your hands and only then go in for your next job. Then the next moment of hand washing again is after expo after body fluid exposure risk. Again, what happens here is um, it is especially when you're exposed to any kind of body fluids of the patient it can be the uh, you know any kind of um, you know mucus or phlegm or um, any kind of discharge. Um, 
the vomitus, when you are uh, handling a urinals, bedpan, when you handle the Foley catheter, anything of that sort. And, in, and sometimes it can also be a simple IV cannula and you have, uh, you have messed yourself because there was a splash of blood. Again, that itself is also a body fluid. So once you know all this, it's better you wash your hands thoroughly or rather change, uh, especially when you're wearing scrubs or make sure it is being uh, taken care of immediately and, uh, and not go unnoticed. So these are all the important times where the hand washing has to be conducted. So before touching a patient, before clean or uh, aseptic procedure being performed, when you are exposed to any kind of body fluids of the patient, after touching the patient and also if you touch the patients. Now, uh, isolation uh, again is one of the methods of um, curbing the uh, infection uh, transmission or rather cross infection again means it is nothing but separation of a patient from contact with the others. So especially when a patient as I mentioned to you previously this one, when a patient is, uh, is having any kind of contagious disease then it's better we isolate the patient and then make sure uh, uh, he's being treated separately. Even the room should not have an AC. Okay, it should, there should be a negative pressure room because you do not want all these um, organisms to be transmitted to the outside atmosphere as well. So everything has to be basically contained in that particular room. The room has to be spacious enough. There should be two sections in that room. That is one is where the patient uh, actually uh, sleeps and the other is where all the uh, equipments are being stored. You have a sink there and once the nurse w walks in, you actually enter into that utility area and only then enter into the patient's uh, room. So basically, there's much uh, ways of, the, there are different levels as you say to cross it over and then enter into the patient's room and that is another way of preventing the infection from spreading. So you wash hands and then you enter the room, You before that you make sure you're wearing your PPEs, you're, th you're completely equipped and only then enter. So what is the need of isolation? Again, the main aim is to control and prevent the spread of infection. Again, as I mentioned to you, the rooms are designed in a particular way. So, okay, the whole idea is to, min, uh, to prevent infection uh, spreading within the hospital and amongst the healthcare personnel as well as between the patients as well. The whole idea is to help protect the patient, even the family members, very, very important, the visitors and the health workers. We just cannot think about we as nurses and doctors. Yes, even the healthcare workers, because there are persons uh, cleaning the place, uh, taking all the discarded items. So, all this has to be thoroughly labeled informed to them and also the room also has to be indicated with the isolation board on uh, in front because they know that yes the person here is under isolation so that itself indicates that yes we have to be careful because the person has got some kind of a contagious disease so the main purpose of this is to prevent cross infection rather cross contamination to confine the infectious disease agent and to confine all body and blood um, of, of the patient rather to contain all the blood and body fluids maintain, making sure that no infection is being out of the room. Now there are different methods or modes means nothing but the different uh, ways of practicing this um, isolation means uh, in the, in the, the different classifications include strict isolation okay. Again uh, the whole purpose of all those different kind of isolation is basically to spread the transmission or rather to prevent cross infection but again uh, especially when you uh, I think everyone would have experienced this uh, having a chicken pox um, episode. Okay, so we know how we contain ourselves and how we, do, we make sure we are using um, a particular uh, uh, sheet and once you know how it is being changed thoroughly. So there is no one else in that room with you. So that is nothing but called as a strict isolation where we are trying to uh, minimize the contact. Okay, and um, what's that? And because we do not want any sort of transmission, even if it is like airborne. So that is why we contain ourselves into a room. We do not come outside, and this kind of an isolation is called as a strict isolation. Respiratory isolation again used to prevent transmission of organisms by means of droplet, okay, especially when you're sneezing, you're thorough, you're coughing, all this is released into the environment, okay. So when you have any kind of such infection, again that it, it implies to even a simple cold that we have or a severe cough, tuberculosis, so all this during this is nothing but called as respiratory isolation. Protective isolation is again to prevent contact between the pathogenic organisms and the uninfected patients. So nothing but especially it is nothing but between two persons that is one is an infected person the other one is not an infected person so again now uh, in the current scenario again do, if a person is having um, covid so we all have well and thoroughly um, uh, experienced this we have seen how persons who have been infected have been taken care of themselves they have isolated themselves they have contained themselves um, they have quarantined themselves the main idea is what to prevent the spread of infection and you watch yourself for your signs and symptoms and depending on that you treat yourself appropriately 
and then again once you have recovered from that you are again watching yourself for another three or four days making sure that that symptoms are not there anymore they have resolved and they're not coming back so the whole idea for this protective isolation is what we do the uninfected or the healthy person discharge isolation is nothing but the secretions okay to prevent the spread of infection uh, by personnel and patients from direct contact with the wounds and secretions so that is the meaning of saying discharge so any kind of uh, discharge like this is related to your uh, blood and body fluids so any kind of discharge from the uh, patients like for example it can be any kind even the basic conjunctivitis especially you have seen the red eye okay the eye infection even for that how we kind of take care the way you use you, you do not rub your hands into it you do not use any kind of uh, towel or you use it uh, you use a clean um, wipe to uh, clean your eyes and how you use it with saline and just rather to flush so all these are ways of trying to minimize the contact with this any kind of infection and this also as i mentioned to you about handling patients with catheters IV cannulas or any kind of drains okay, that the pipes attached after surgery that's also very very important so all this is being taken uh, classified as the discharge isolation Se or rather secretion precautions like oral again when a person has got um, you know uh, secretions happening again all that is not uh, just something minimal um, uh, you know simple you have to take use precaution so that because it is from an infected patient's uh, patient that it's coming out so even when you clean it it make sure you have you discard it appropriately because that is what is the most important thing and even when it is discarded because you have learned about biomedical waste management so this is when it comes into play you need to ensure where these things have to be discarded into the into the proper color coded um bins okay enteric isolation again there's nothing but used to control diseases that can be transmitted through direct or indirect oral contact um or with infected feces or contaminated articles for example uh, like dysentery so the simple example is dysentery uh, or like uh, the loose motions that you have so again what happens we this is called as enteric anything related to your digestive um, or the um, the gastrointestinal system again here also very important you follow strict um, Uh, hand washing methods uh, um, using using of soap um, hot water to wash hands thoroughly whenever you know you have such a uh, kind of problems and whenever you have um, uh, used the restrooms make sure you wash hands dry it effectively and do not use uh, different towels make sure you have your own hand towels to use and do not share these items so these are all the different ways of preventing such kind of infection also in wound and skin isolation this is also especially when a person has got any kind of skin infections or um, like any kind of um, dermatitis again uh, any kind of infection or inflammation of the skin again this can also be spread because they are all flaky skins you know, sometimes what happens even when you are on your bed you wake up in the morning you can see everything on your bed like all the dead skins on your like white bits of powder so again these are all different uh, you know in uh, methods how the infections can spread especially when it is not being taken care of uh, properly blood isolation again used to prevent um, acquisition of infection by patients or personnel from contact with blood so that is also very important that is why i tell you when you when a patient walks to you when you're trying to collect um, history from the patient it's very very important you collect the complete history about what is disease sometimes a patient can turn out to be he is a hepatitis positive patient or like for example in today's scenario he is a covid positive patient if you do not um, extract the uh, the appropriate information all such information can be missed out okay so it's very important you try to uh, get the complete history of the patient sometimes as i told you even hiv okay or aids that can also be um, a person who is uh, having it and maybe the person is the person may not be in a in a state of mind to actually tell it out because uh, something is actually just stopping him from uh, letting you know but again as a nurse it is your duty to find out and uh, talk to the person in such a way that you're going to get all this information from the patient so again it is not to ridicule him or not to condemn him it is just to be safe okay for you to be safe to the patient and the pa and also for you to take care of the patient okay next the next method of um, containing or making sure that these um, uh, the aseptic methods are being followed thoroughly is by use of ppes which i don't have to explain thoroughly it's nothing but the personal protective equipments or rather the special equipments that you wear in order to create a barrier or nothing but to prevent the spread of germs so that includes um uh, the protocols to be followed by the entire hospital staff the entire healthcare team and this has to be thoroughly induced because and um, induced because the whole idea is not to give any sort of infection to the patient and rather not to take any infection from them to you okay and all of these personal protective equipments are also very very crucial the different types of ppes again includes the wear the gloves eye protection the gowns uh, shoe covers 
um, even the caps head covering as well. It's very important in areas in the hospital even where uh, the patient's visitors also have to wear the gowns and cap and mask. The Yes, the nurse has to, in has to insist then tell them the importance of wearing them and only then walking into the patient's room because we do not want any kind of infection to be given to the ill patient. And once they have used it and once they are leaving, it is very important you tell them where it has to be discarded. And once it is discarded, you also let them know the importance of hand washing as well before they leave the room. So that is also important because they do, we do not want the hospital infection to be carried by patient's family to the patient's home. Okay. So very important. These are all the PPEs. Now, importance about how to wear the gowns and masks. This is also being taught to you about how to glove yourself and how to um, the importance of wearing them. Okay. So what you do first, as I told you, is you put on your scrubs. These are the hospital scrubs that you always see the operation theatre uh, personals wearing them on, like putting on the scrubs. Then you put on your shoe covers or the boot covers. You wash your hands. You put on the mask. You put on the cap. And sometimes what happens is you put on another surgical mask as well. Okay, these are all the different methods used by the uh, theater tech, theater nurses uh, th that they follow before they start off with the surgical procedure. You wear your goggles, which is something but your eye protective um, thing uh, equipment. So once all this is doned, doning is nothing but what you're wearing them. Okay, so that is the meaning of it. So you once you're done with all this, then you roll up your sleeves. So that uh, that also I will tell you, you roll up your sleeves so that you do not want again the sleeves to be wet and the water to be dripping back. So you roll your sleeves up and then you go for your scrubbing, means nothing but your hand washing. Once it is done, you again will start wearing the gown and then you put on your gloves. And then finally, that is your complete attire of a uh, surgical uh, personnel. Okay, so this is how you wear your personal protective. Now, how do we take it off? Again, the same, uh, the whole, uh, the steps again includes the reverse. So we start by removing the gown and the gloves first and then again discarding them appropriately depending upon how soiled it is. If there is blood splashes, yes, it has to go into the yellow bin. If not, it, uh, it can go into the white bin. And again, as I told you, the, the way the hospital follows the protocols, yes, according to them, you have to be discarding them. Then have gloves removed as one um, unit with gown. So that is what the ones where the, you remove the gown, the gloves also will come off. Then sometimes what happens, you can, um, since you know that yes, there may be splashes or something because you have stood with this patient uh, performing the surgery, then what happens, you can put on your, the simple exam, the clean gloves, not the sterile packaging gloves, the clean gloves, and then make sure you remove the shoe covers. Again, uh, keep the rest of the headgear, okay, headgear means what, all the rest of your other items. So only now what happens, your, your gloves, your gown, and your shoe covers are off. All your complete headgear is still on. So then what happens? Most of the time when you know that in case you have soiled your shoe covers, then you wear the gloves and you remove it. And what happens after that, you actually remove that gloves and you wash your hands. Okay. And again, you put on your fresh gloves and then only you remove your complete headgear. That is, you start off by removing the uh, goggles and then the, you know, the mask and then the hair cap. And then all this has to be thoroughly discarded or it has to be appropriately discarded. And finally, you do a round of hand washing again. And with that means you have, you have uh, followed the effective methods of uh, containing or, um, or rather uh, removing your uh, used PPEs. So okay, this is an important method that you have to follow about doning and doffing. Doffing means what and how you dis dispose them. Now, for doning and doffing or doffing of uh, PPEs, I have actually given you this YouTube link. So if you can possibly watch it, it will be really good. So that this actually takes you through um, a proper video about showing how you actually don and doff. So in case you get a chance as well. Okay. So disposing them is uh, very, very crucial. As I told you, depending upon how much it is being soiled, it is very important you dispose them appropriately. There is no chance of reusing anything. Even if you feel it is clean, I can reuse it on another patient. There is no way. You do not do that because the whole idea is following the aseptic technique. Okay. And once it is all being disposed after um, the procedure is being performed on a patient and then this particular used equipment has to be thoroughly contained and sent off to the biomedical waste department. And from there what happens, they will t uh, t take care of how these um, used, um, uh, what is that? Um, used uh, uh, what, uh, used equipments will be discarded off effectively without causing any kind of infection to remain. And even it's very important, especially when you know that you're handling this um, isolated patient or rather patients in isolation, it is very important you mark the 
uh, the bin bags as well rather any case of that sort you have to mark it thoroughly because even the the, the what is it the the healthcare workers or rather the person helpers people handling this biomedical waste they should also be um, vigilant and they should also be informed that yes this this particular the bag has come from an isolation ward or rather the person ha this has come from an um, operation theater but the person was maybe hiv positive or maybe he was a covid positive patient or maybe he had some kind of contagious disease so it has to be marked appropriately because we do not want even the uh, healthcare or the biomedical personnel to by any chance get this um, uh, infection transmitted to them in any way okay so with this we come to um, the end of this particular topic and we will continue with the same in the next we'll come continue with um, the next topic in the next session thank you for your time